Hey guys, welcome back to Retro Peace Theater. So we are now on Chapter 5 of King's Quest 7, Nightmare in Etheria. Um, this is a very long episode, I'm going to jump right into it. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to get all the dialogue in, but I'm also going to try to skip any unnecessary dialogue from the characters. Badger of the jury, what is your verdict? On the charge of moon theft, we find her... Guilty! Dun, dun, dun. On the charge of impersonating a Falderalian, we find her. <laughs> On the charges of party crashing, sneaking, spying, and appearing in public without fur, feather, or scales, we find her. Guilty! 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 Dun dun dun! Felonies of Devontree, this is your sentence. You must spend the rest of your life in the jelly bean mines of the faraway kingdom of Wagga Wagga Boing Boing. <laughs> what? I never heard of such a place. You just made that up, didn't you? So I did. So I did. Does anyone have an idea for her sentence? Banish her to the plains of petulant possums. <laughs> Maroon her on the island of ill-natured iguanas. <laughs> Make her count every grain of bird seed in the land. Make her put the moon back into the sky. <gasps> the people have spoken. You have until sunset to put the moon back in its rightful place in the sky, Valanis. If you do not, you will be fed to a 300 pound hamster in the morning. Yeah. Port adjourned. The sky is falling, Bob! The sky is falling! In that case, let us move the party to the sub sub basement. Guards! Remove that terrorist creature! That's a magnificent trial. I love that. Alright, so we gotta put the moon back in the sky. So I need to go back into the faux shop. And like I said, I'm gonna try to skip a lot of unnecessary conversations, so I'm just gonna tell you what I'm doing. Because as it is, I'll probably have to split this into two episodes. Oh, hello, madam. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Uh, if I give him the mask. Would you be interested in this lovely mask? Oh, I would. It's just magnificent. For that, I'll give you the best thing in my store. I love that that's the best thing in the store. Here. Take this rubber chicken. Ah, thank you, I suppose. That's magnificent. All right. And now we give the statuette to the salesman. Here you are, the magic statuette. And here is your weir beast, Sev, my lady Valanis. Thank you. How does it work? You must apply it to your body. First, it must be mixed with a bit of animal hair. Animal hair? What kind? Why, whatever animal you wish to transform into. However, I would not recommend a fat mouse or a juicy squirrel. <laughs> Excuse me, my lady. <clears throat> I must go and consult my statuette. All right. So to put the moon back into the sky, we take our rubber chicken. We put the rubber chicken on the tree. And we pick up our moon. And slingshot. 
<laughs> of course it's alive. In this wonderful place, why wouldn't the rubber chicken be alive? <clears throat> uh, congratulations, oh hairless one. Thank you have returned the moon to the sky. <laughs> you are granted a full pardon. Oh, thank you, Archduke Yip Yap. Never let it be said that Archduke Fifila Yip Yap, fearless warhound of Falderol, cannot be merciful. Now, if you'll excuse me, the volcano is smoking, so I'm off to hide in the basement. And this pretty much finishes what we need to do in this town. So let's go out through our little red door here. I don't believe we come back here. It's been so long. I'm trying to do a lot of this from memory. And it's it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I, I play so many games and I've got a lot of stuff kind of filed away. And I've had people ask me, like, oh, how do you remember how to play this game? And I'll use um, something that was told to me by a friend of mine who performs a lot of plays which is you don't start making cookies and end up with pizza uh, meaning that once you start down a formula and you start down something familiar you end up actually I need to go this way um, once you start down a formula and doing things you end up with what you start with so a lot of things are kinda coming back to me but in this episode it's entirely possible I may miss something because um, there's just so much we have to do here I need to go speak with Atus. I'm pretty sure I have to speak with Atus. We'll, be, we'll, we'll see. We're just going to go through this together. Lord Atus. I advise you to turn back, my lady. These once magical woods have been cursed, and no one is safe here. I love his voice. I am Valenys of Daventry, Noble Stag, and I appreciate your concern, but I am on a mission from which I cannot be dissuaded. I must enter your woods. You are brave, but know this, the oak tree you see before you... I think we've had this conversation. Is there nothing that can break the enchantment on you and your wife, Attis? Hmm. Perhaps there is, but... I know not what. Feldspar, the ancient rock spirit, might tell you. If only there was a way to awaken him. You see, I am becoming more like a natural stag with every passing hour. Thought becomes more difficult, and the shadows of the forest sing to my blood. If I find any way to help you, I will, my lord Attis. Okay. So we're going to go find Feldspar, the rock spirit. Uh, who we have not met or seen yet. Even for the pixel shading and the graphic limitations of the time, these background environments are just gorgeous. You can tell a lot of love went in from the artist to make them. I mean, look at this tree. This is just so well illustrated for, you know, like I said, the graphic limitations. You can see the pixels, but it's still just wonderful to look at and very pleasing to the eyes. Here we have Feldspar, who we're going to wake using the feather of the rubber chicken. Uh, uh, uh. 
why have you disturbed my slumber, mortal? My apologies, noble spirit, but the bountiful woods are in terrible trouble. Lord Attis has been changed into a stag, and Nate Ceres into a tree. That could not have happened if the river of life still flowed and the cornucopia was filled. They are the heart and lifeblood of the woods, and it will perish without them. You must start the river flowing by pouring sacred drink into the river maiden's pitcher. Replenish the cornucopia by placing sacred food in the cornucopia maiden's horn of plenty. Act quickly. I cannot stay awake. Okay. <clears throat> So now we're on the other side of the bank. Um, so we need to go back around. We also need to go back to the desert and get one last item. Um, I thought I had grabbed the jackalope fur, but apparently uh, at some point I didn't. So I need to go back and get the jackalope fur. Because in order for the weirby salve to work, I have to add the fur of an animal to it. And of course our goal here is to uh, restore Attis and Lady Cirrus back to themselves. So we're going to head back to the desert real quick and I'm going to get the jackalope fur. And that'll complete everything I need to do in the desert as well. I thought I grabbed it earlier, apparently I didn't. There it is. Okay, and then we can put the jackalope fur inside the weirby salve, and that's ready to go. Okay. And if you remember, when we first came to an episode, let's see, it would have been episode three of this game, chapter three. Um, when we first arrived in this world here with Addis and and everything in the silly town, there was uh, a hummingbird that was trapped in a spider's nest that we helped. And here she's going to attempt to repay us a favor. Hello, kindest of humans. Do you desire some sacred nectar? I do indeed. Can you get me some? Certainly. Do you have a vessel to hold the nectar? Yes, we do. Good. Hold it directly to the flowers, my lady. Thank you. Okay. And now we have the nectar in the pot. And we're going to use that on the vessel. Come, Lord Attis. Perhaps a drink from the River of Life will give you strength. The 
enchantment has been broken. Indeed. Now perhaps I can save my lovely Ceres. Let us hurry, Valenice. And we're going to come back to this statue here in just a little bit. <clears throat> it would seem that the curse is stronger than I am, but I will not let her die. I will not. I wish I could have helped you more, Lord Attis. But now I feel I must go to my daughter. I think she's in a dark land beyond these woods, and that she is in grave danger. Valenice, if she is in Ugabuga, you must pass through the swamp, and I have learned of a terrible monster who dwells there. I will help you evade him. But first, I must try to save my lady love. Okay, so he's going to do that. And we're going to go on into the forest, heading towards the land of Ugabuga. This is where the Werby salve comes in. Pardon me, I'm having a bit of a dryness to my throat. Oh, I feel so strange. It's a wonderful Bugs Bunny style moment there. Don't think I've ever run so fast in my in my life. And if you don't do all that stuff to save Atus, you will die here. Noble Atus. He was true to his word. And we'll see Addis again here soon. Hello. 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 Yep, not even going to entertain him. Now we're going to go see an old friend. Hey, that wasn't very nice. Dr. Mort Cadaver. Yes? Oh my! You bear a stunning resemblance to a young lady I met earlier this evening. That must have been my daughter, Rosella! My dear lady, do come in. I rather like Dr. Cadaver. So you are the mother of the charming Miss Rosella. Pleased to meet you, lady. Valenice of Daventry, sir. What a lovely name! I am Dr. Mort Cadaver. What can I do for you, Lady Valenice? When was the last time you saw my daughter? Where was she going? 
I saw her but a few short hours ago. She asked me about the Troll King, and very kindly brought me a new backbone. I do not know where she was headed. Dr. Cadaver, how was Rosella when you spoke with her? Did she seem well? Oh, abundantly so. She was the liveliest creature I've seen in years. <laughs> so we need to keep Dr. talking to him Cadaver, until he kicks us out, basically. I hope this isn't rude of me, but is everyone in Ooga Booga, well, dead? As a doornail, for the most part. Forgive me, Lady Valenice, but I have to make a house call. Good evening, Valenice. I will let you know if I hear word of Rosella. Thank you, Doctor. Good night. Okay. <clears throat> so, the kids are out, so we're going to use our little, uh, rope pulley system here. And again, this is the world where everything can kill you, largely because everything's already dead. So we're just going to grab this bone that the mummy is holding on to here. And we're going to get out of there. Okay. Now we're going to go to an area that we haven't been to before. Um, if you've played it on your own, you've probably found it. Um, but... I haven't played it in this playthrough because I've been trying to focus on just getting through it in a timely fashion. Again, don't talk to her, you die. Okay. And now we toss in the bone. Good dog. Nice dog. He's just a big sweetie. There now. You're not such a bad dog after all. And you are not such a bad human. You are the first creature to be kind to me since I lost my master and mistress. Thank you. You poor fellow. What happened to your people? My master was beheaded by Malicia's foul gargoyle and cursed to ride the skies in search of his head. My mistress died of grief shortly thereafter. And I? I tried to defend my home when the boogeyman came to burn it. I failed. Your master was Count Seppish? He was. I was proud to fight at his side. I would like to help your master. If I recovered his head, do you think the curse would be lifted? We can only hope. Here, take my master's medal. It may help you in the search. And thank you, brave lady. I love so many of the personalities that the, that the characters in this game have. There's so many different personality types, and it's, it's so colorful um, to experience. So we're done with the good boy. Now, this medal we give to her. 
<clears throat> Here you are. It's locked. Okay. Oh, headless horseman. That would be our Lord Sepish. Now we're just going to avoid him. I think in a previous episode I, I miscorrectly called him the boogeyman. He's not the boogeyman. All right. So we're going to come back here to where the kids are. And actually, I'm going to make a save. Uh, make a new bookmark and keep playing. Because it's just easy to die here and. Okay, we're gonna pick up this firecracker. I'm gonna try to get back to the uh, tomb that's locked before it explodes, because it is currently a lit firecracker. horseman's head. We are going to attempt to give this back to the horseman. This is another area where you can die and you got to kind of time it right because if you don't, he will trample you. I think I got it. that was placed on me, my lady. I am deeply indebted to you. Black Valiant. I like that name. Black Valiant. It's a good name for a dog. Elspeth, my Elspeth. How I have missed you, my love. And I you, my dearest darling. You have done me an immeasurable kindness. Tell me what I can do for you in return. I must find a way to Etheria, Calvary. Love the look on the horse's face. It is imperative. I have heard that you may be able to help me. Consider it done. I will give you the use of my horse. Here, take this fife. With it, you can call him to take you to Etheria. Once there, you cannot summon him, or he will not be able to hear you. But he will always come to you anywhere on this surface lands. Thank you, Count. It is nothing. Fly, necromancer! Carry the lady to Etheria! Okay. Well, this seems like a natural point to, uh in this episode so um we got more to do we got a lot more to do uh so next episode i'll see you there uh, we're gonna finish up this chapter hopefully and uh we're almost done with the game so thanks for watching and i'll see you next episode bye